Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating and curious game to show you from the Gibraltar 28 tournament. Shanda Sandipan was playing against the great Vasily Ivanchuk. So Sandipan, a very strong uh, grandmaster himself. d4, knight f6, c4, e6 from Ivanchuk. Knight c3, bishop b4, the Nimzo Indian. e3, c5, knight g e2, c takes e takes d5 and now white plays c5 so establishing an advanced pawn already knight e4 bishop d2 not minding giving up the dark square bishop here but yeah that is actually what happens knight takes queen takes a5 this has been seen before a3 and this has all been seen before up until this point when usually white just plays bishop d3 I don't know if this is some kind of advanced preparation. This position, for example, which has been seen before, is thought to be about even. Black has fixed down that b3 pawn. There's a backward pawn here. Black has a very comfortable position. It seems white wanted to give Ivanchuk some major headache here, right from the start. I wonder if you can guess the kind of outrageous move he played. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, I believe it's a theoretical novelty. Okay, knight takes a4. The point is, after rook takes, bishop b5 check, but you might think, hold on a sec, doesn't it have a snag? Usually, it's not good to give up two minor pieces for a rook. Is it any different here? So two uh, minor pieces have been given up, but look at these pawns, they're kind of dangerous. I think, in a practical sense, black has to be quite aware of the risks now that are being created of this pawn mobility, this, this this pawn majority and the pawn mobility. We see queen b4 now and perhaps hitting b7 and a4, perhaps bishop c6 is okay for black for the foreseeable uh, future. This kind of position uh, from an engine point of view at least is okay with a small edge. You can see any b4 black can just take it. It should be a small edge for black. Uh, Ivanchuk uh, played actually Queen d7, white castles, and now it seems black should consider castling. For example, here it seems okay as well for black. Um, maybe b4, there's, there's things like b6 here uh, to consider. But uh, Ivanchuk played Queen B5 instead, actually. And interestingly, okay, White played an extremely cunning move now. B3. After Queen takes, A takes. Yeah, there's there's a big idea of Rook A8 here, potentially, or Rook A7. Black plays Bishop B5. Maybe Ivanchuk expected the Rook to move. Uh, if, if the rook did move, then king d7 addresses rook a7, because then there's king c6. And I don't think the black pawns are going too far. The mobility is a bit restricted here. Things seem safe enough for black for the foreseeable future, with black having the advantage. Can you guess what white played in this position, if I give you five seconds, starting from now? Clue, it wasn't moving the rook. Okay, rook a7. Yeah, not giving black any time whatsoever, really, to try and protect uh, the pawn. And if bishop c6, there's also b5 now. This this will be a kind of disaster scenario, because taking on b8, taking on h8. So, yeah, it's like black is being pushed into this situation where he has to face these menacing pawns now. So, bishop takes, rook. But here, rook takes b7, hitting the knight. Knight c6, and now taking on f1, letting d4 go as well. I think black's uh, best try here is rook f8. For example, letting d4 go, this position might actually be still uh, palatable if, for example, this counter sack, this is palatable to maybe have an even position. 
But instead, here, Evan Chuk played uh, Castling. If he plays knight takes d4, uh, then there's rook bh-check winning the rook. So he, rook f8, though, it seems a bit weird to play rook f8, but it might be what the doctor orders here for black's position. So anyway, with the king away, it can't really help against these pawns. We have b5, knight a5. You can see the dangers on knight takes d4 after c6, for example, c7, with rook b8 to follow, or b6. This position is just going to get grim. White has a big advantage there. Yeah. Uh, so the knight went to a5, but after rook c7, then felt his position was totally lost. He resigns here. If we look at this, let's say knight takes b6. The passborns are pretty dangerous indeed. And I'm not sure there's any potential even for counter sacking. Let's explore that potential though. If white has a passborn there, this particular rook and pawn ending, as an example, is going to, this is just a sample ending, it's just going to be much better for white. So yeah, the game ended around here, even factoring perhaps even factoring in a counter knight sack it seems hopeless for black so that was a really interesting and brave novelty perhaps you could say brave but uh, maybe not to be repeated anytime soon because if it seems black might be okay technically then uh yeah players in the future are going to be pre prepared against this but it's a you know major novelty to face at the board uh causing big headaches in a practical sense at least for this key game encounter so credit to Chandler Sandipan for being so brave and, and finding this novelty uh, which did have a devastating effect in this game comments questions like and shares appreciated thanks very much